Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the transport or the transport bar in Reaper. Now, the transport is right down over here. And I've had a few people tell me they couldn't find it or they lost it and thought they had to reinstall Reaper to get it back. But you don't have to do that. You can go to the view menu right here, and here it is. So if you ever can't find it and it disappears, Just go to the view menu and choose it again. And there it is. Now we could change the layout of the transport bar in the options menu. If we go down to layouts, if we go to transport, we could choose different layouts here. I'm using large, but you can use small or standard if you want this to take up less room on your screen. I like using large in my tutorials because it makes it easier to see. If we go to the bottom left here, this button is going to go to the start of your project. So if we're over here, we can just click this button, it goes right to the beginning. Now the next button takes us to the end of the project. So you can go right to the last item that's in your project. For me, it's bar 12. You can jump back and forth from the beginning to the end that quickly. Now with most things in Reaper, you could right click them to see more options. And this is no different. We could right click these and we go to the start of the project or go to the previous marker or use this down here. Use the transport for home and for markers. So if we choose this, see how the buttons look different? Now if we had markers in the song, let's put some in. Then we can go down here with this option turned on, use transport for home, end, and markers. We can go to the next marker just by hitting these. Go back to the beginning, hit this one to go to the first marker, which is right here, hit it again to go to the next marker, and so on. So if you map out your song for verse, pre-chorus, and chorus, you can jump to each song section with these buttons, forward and backwards. And if you don't want that behavior, just turn it off, and it goes back to the beginning or the end. But you can also hit W to go right to the beginning if you don't want to use these buttons. Now next, we have the stop button, which does what you think it does. If you hit play and hit stop, it stops the song. And this is the play button. But if you right click this, it's a shortcut to take us to this dialog. External time code synchronization. We can get to that through the menus over here, right down here. But if you want to get there quicker, just right click the play button and it opens up. And the next button is pause. Now, personally, I think pause is underused. The pause button can be very helpful. Let me give an example. And let's say I wanted to write automation on the synth track. We hit V, then we go into a write mode. Let's choose write. Then I can move my fader on the control surface, and we can see the movement immediately. So now I'm writing as I go. But now I can hit play, and then instead of hitting stop after I'm done, I can choose pause instead. Watch. And it keeps the edit cursor at that point. So I can move my fader again to create different automation at this point. And then hit play to continue it. Then as long as I hit pause instead of stop, it's going to pause in that place. So I can create a different level right there and keep moving. That's one of the benefits of using pause instead of stop. Now the next button is the record button. Obviously, we're going to use it for going into record. But if we right click it, we can choose our recording modes. Normal, time selection auto punch, and auto punch selected items. Which is the same thing we could do over here. 
sometimes it's quicker just to go right here and switch it. And also, if we switch the mode to something different, the record button changes to this or to this. So we can see what mode we're in just by looking at the button. And next, we have the loop button. If we create a time selection over here from bar two to bar three, and we want it to loop, just hit this button. Then if we turn it off, it won't loop and plays right through. Next over here, we have the global automation mode. Now normally, when you're writing automation, you go to the individual track, like this one, and switch it to different automation modes, right here. But sometimes you want to do that to all tracks, or override what's on the individual tracks. And we could do that right from here. It starts off with no global override, but we can change it to trim read, and all the tracks go to trim read, or read, or touch, or latch, or write. And then we can switch it back right here, and then go back to the individual modes. It's very helpful for writing many tracks at the same time. You just want to go to touch mode very quickly, just do it right here, and then turn it off when you're done. But there's a few other options in here. We could bypass all the envelopes. So if you have any envelopes on your tracks, we could bypass all of them right from here. And see how it turns red, letting us know that? And we could turn them back on right here. And also, we can go right down here to show all the active track envelopes. So we can see all of them just by choosing this. Then over here, we have our readout for where we are in the song. So if I go to the beginning, it goes back to bar one, beat one, and zero hours, minutes, and seconds. But if you want to jump to a specific bar, we can just double click this and type it in. Let's go to bar two, and our cursor goes to bar two, or bar three, and so on. And you could also right click to change what we see. Right now it's bars and beats and time, but we could change it just to minutes and seconds, just measures and beats, seconds, samples, hours, minutes, and seconds, and frames, and absolute frames. But I'm going to put it back to measures, beats, and minutes and seconds. So I can see both. Now over here, we can see our status. Right now it's stopped, but if I hit play, it shows that it's playing. Or if I go into record, it shows that it's recording. And next, we can see a song tempo. In beats per minute, right now it's set to 90, but if we go right here to tap, we could tap for our tempo. Just click on it and create a new tempo. Or type in what you want to use. Next, we have our time signature. It'd be 4 4, 3 4, or 6 8. And the bars and beats will change to that time signature. Let's put it back to 4 4. Next, we have our rate, which determines how fast the song plays back. So we could slow it down, or speed it up, or we could right click to increase it by certain amounts, like semitones, or cents, or preserve the pitch when we're changing the play rate. And we could double click it to go back to normal. Then over here, we have our selection. This is actually more helpful than you think. Let's create a selection from bar two to bar three. And we can see that selection right down here. 
two to three, and the length of it is one. So if we know we want to change it, maybe from two to four, just click right here, type in four, and we have that selection. And we could change the beginning to three and have that selection. Now with the last one, the length of the selection, we could do the same thing. Make it two bars, and our selection is two bars long. But what I really like to do with this is use the mouse wheel or the trackpad. With the trackpad, you can use two fingers or just roll the mouse wheel and go right up to this, and we can change our start or the end. Or my favorite over here, we can change both together. So it stays consistent as we move it, but we're changing the start and end together, which we could also do up here by holding down shift by the ruler and move it around like this. But it's a great way of creating loops that don't start right on the bar. So if I wanted to zoom in right to here and create a loop that's one bar long, I can just type it in right here and turn the loop on for that one bar loop. And we can shift it around right here. Maybe start here instead. Or over here. It's a great way of shifting your time selections, but keeping their length consistent. Now I should also mention, in the menu we saw before, besides this right here, there's a bunch of other options that are all condensed in this menu. Like the play rate one is the same menu as if we right click over here. But there are a few options that don't show up in other places. Like down over here, we could show the play rate control or we can hide it. So now we don't see it anymore. So if you don't use it, you don't need to have it on your transport. And the same thing, with our time signature, or seeing our text right over here that shows the status, we could hide those things or we could show them. And we could also center the transport controls, which is gonna move the transport controls over here, over to here, into the middle. And it puts the other stuff on the left. So if you prefer this look, just choose it over here. So that's pretty much it. That's the transport or the transport bar in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mom.